like, uh, oh, the GBC, they're so much greater than I am, you know? Ha <laughs> ha, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's some kind of pure devotees or something, you know? Prabhupada so-called elected them. Oh, Prabhupada, you know, they are the best servants of Srila Prabhupada or some crazy fanatical idea that you have. I, my thing is, I, I'm wondering who's going to be on it, you know? Is it going to be like different people or is this like they call it GBC strategic planning, but is it actually the so-called unelected GBC people that are going to talk or is it going to be a yes, body of people? Yes. Or is no, it going to be some neophyte? Some neophyte they picked up from the street and they're just kind of, you know, slugging him in and be like, hey, why don't you do this so-called, you know, experiment? <laughs> Oh, I see. I see. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Kind of push them in yeah. front and, yeah. and see how people react, you know? You know, these yeah. people are very clever. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yes, they are clever. And uh, for people that don't know their history, that don't know the history, um, it's easy for them to be fooled. Right, right. Yeah. See, I spent literally years of my life doing research and reading the documents. Like when I read the GBC bylaws that, that say that they're the beneficiary, the sole and exclusive beneficiaries of the sum total of ISKCON's assets, I couldn't even believe it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hi, Paul. who's on? We got uh, Rupa Manjari Prabhu, yourself and me. So we were just- oh, Wait a second. I I'm not hooked up properly with the earphones. Let me call you back. Right, sounds good. Yeah, so you studied the whole GBC, uh, what you want to call it, propaganda, huh? The whole bogus, yeah. unelected well, propaganda for many years, huh? And yes, yes, and it's important to read okay, just the like bylaws. I'll come back in. It's important to read the bylaws because then you see legally how they've prop themselves up you know right right and yeah. um and how where they say that you know if you want to be a member of ISPON, then you need to accept that the gbc society of west bengal is the quote-unquote ultimate ecclesiastical authority of ISCON. end quote so wow so, so that means that they're even more powerful than the founder acharya of the international society precisely precisely oh. Right. And that they, it's, and they are the interpreters of Prabhupada's money. That's what it means uh -huh. by the word ecclesiastical. Ecclesiastical means according to scripture. Right, right, right. Hare Krishna. Yes, I'm just talking to Narner. I'm trying to get him on. So, oh, okay. Hare Krishna to everyone. Hare Bo Mahi Prabhu. Hare Krishna Mataji, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? Great, great, great. All right. So, Narner and Prabhu, he's he's uh, trying to get his microphone fixed up. So today is the biggest ikadashi of the century. Oh, nice. Uh, hello? Yes. Can you hear us? Can you oh, hear us? You're not coming through the... Uh, yeah, you, you got to leave You got to leave the meeting. You got to leave the meeting and come back in. Okay, I'm trying to leave the meeting. Okay, leave the meeting. Yeah, leave the meeting. There you go. Jai. All right. Thanks for helping him. You're so nice to him. Uh, yeah, he's the star of the show, so... He's a what? <laughs> oh, the star of the show. Yeah, exactly. The main, the main, uh, the main the lead, boss. right? The main actor. He's the boss, man. Yeah, and he likes that too. <laughs> exactly. He That's loves correct. having a captive audience. Yeah. Madhuri is saying very correctly. He <laughs> likes that also. Someone has to do it. He, he so fits much. that role very likes good. That. Prabhu likes it too much. 
Ramachandra Prabhu's transcendental humor. Okay. I love it. Yeah. Uh, okay, yeah. let's get okay, started. Here we are. Okay. Now, Ram Prabhu, we were talking about this thing here. Let me get it on screen so you yeah. can uh, write. Oh, I have it here. One second. You have that video, bro? No, we're not going to talk Prabhu. about that video. I think it's pretty clear. By the way, Prabhu, it would be nice if we all wore tilak on this meeting, you know? Yeah, I'll go put it on right now. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> next time tomorrow next time. okay here it is oh yes. yes so first of all there's a sign here gbc strategic planning i wonder that what that means no no and what do you think it means would it probably ever have something like gbc strategic planning no i mean if if this were GBC in Prabhupada's ideal format, you know, elected for three-year terms by civil presidents and not appointing gurus, uh, that would be a nice thing to see up on the screen. However, considering what these guys are up to, I think it reinforces the idea that this is what you could call, I don't want to be negative or, or you know, yeah. false, not, yeah. not the, you know, 
optimistic, but uh, it, to me, it sounds like damage control. <laughs> of course, yeah. All you ever wanted to know about the GBC, but never had the courage to ask. I mean, you've been asking for 50 years, right? No, no, no. <laughs> Not even asked, I've told. I've you've known. told and asked, but... Uh... <laughs> yeah, I've never asked anybody anything. I mean, they know damned well what they're up to and what they're doing and why they're doing it. And they think they can get away with it. And they lean back on their on the religion of the religions of their childhood whether it is uh, Judaism or Christianity or particularly Catholicism, they just sink back into the sofa, the, uh, the comfortable cushion of the Vyasasana on that one to try to say, okay, now we got it down. Prabhupada gave us the right idea and now we're going to run it the way we know how to run it, which is in the context of corporate mentality and uh, Catholic structure. Mm -hmm. You know they they know darn well what they're doing, but they they think they're supposed that they're, they think it will work for some reason. They don't take these this, well. They don't if they took the spiritual masters seriously, they wouldn't pretend to be spiritual masters. <laughs> because I mean, first of all, you have to be in, in the Vaishnava line. Well, technically we are in the Vaishnava line, but you have to be a uttama adhikari. And that has not occurred to them. Mm -hmm. They don't see why. They say, well, Prabhupada's the Uttamadikari, the quote-unquote Jesus figure, and we are the not to be just not to be yes. distinguished category of Adhikari, and we follow the Jesus category of Prabhupada, and he will take us back to Godhead. Yeah. No matter what we do. Just like Christians, my God, they're busy murdering murdering people day and night in the idea of turning the other cheek and loving your brother as yourself, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That, another thing is recently I had a a, a heard a uh, class by a devotee that's Pujari in Berkeley. He said, yeah. uh, I think we saw the video, but it was saying to that, oh, the GBC, it's a GBC law that Prabhupada is the Shiksha Guru of everyone. Even if your Diksha Guru falls down, you take Prabhupada as the Guru and he's, he's the person that will be liberating you. So just see what kind of, uh, you know. Well, it's interesting. Uh, we could say if that's the case, then why not cut out the middleman? Right. <laughs> why not cut out the middleman? Right. Yeah. Yes. Why do we need the uh, fall down Guru? For what is he doing? He's just like a fall down priest in a church. He's been caught uh, molesting children, so he moved into a different parish, you know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yes, yes, that's what. Uh, I think they take the assumption also the way they do in the church, where uh, if you commit a sin, if a priest molests a child, uh, he does so when he's not on the altar, as, as you could say. It's not when he's performing Mass. When he's off the altar, not performing Mass, he ceases to be, ceases to be a transparent via medium of the ritual. Mm. In other words, he's no longer just a functionary of the ritual with his arms and legs moving and his mouth moving according to a channeled ritualization of the, of the church. So when he's off of there, he's sort of like on his own. When he's on his own, he takes sacramental wine, gets some choir boys drunk, and molests them. Mm. Okay, that's sinful. He knows it. The kids don't know it because they are confused. They think they're supposed to do whatever the priest tells them to do. But he knows it's sinful, so he goes and confesses. Mm. At confession, oh, my son, you've, you've, you have sinned again? In the same way, again, constantly, every week, again, like that? Are you really sinning, you son of a gun? Are you really doing that? Yes, Father. Well, introduce me to some of these kids, why not? You know, <laughs> and maybe I can sin some too. But anyhow, the, the, the point is not that the, he goes to the priest, let's say the priest is on the up and up, and he confesses everything to the priest. 
in gory details, and the priest then absolves him. And the end of the confession of the Catholic Church is, go thou and sin no more, lest the worst, the worst thing befall you. Mm. Mm. But you can do that endlessly. You have to do a certain number of Hail Marys on your 50% Trumpa beads, 54 beads instead of 108. <laughs> Interesting. And, and you chant on your Trumpa beads, Hail Marys, and you uh, do some penance, and maybe you go without dessert for a week or something of that sort, which has a penance. If you're rich, you put up thousands or even millions of dollars to buy your forgiveness. I've seen People become a Mrs. Doheny, the wife of the oil guy from Teapot Dome, uh, famed one of the, er the earliest, uh, actually the earliest person to dig for oil downtown Los Angeles. He, his wife, gave so much money to the church that the Pope made her a, a papal countess. Can you imagine? Wow, wow. Papal Countess. In what exchange is that? for big chunks of money. Oh, oh wow. she created a, a, a monastery in, uh, oh, I did a lot of work restoring very rare art from them in uh, Camarillo. I stayed there for months in a motel. So, uh, so they learn all about their stuff. It's just astonishing. They just buy their way into heaven through the papacy and through the priests. So getting back to these guys, they are sunk into the idea that they can sin and then Prabhupada will pick up the slack, just like the priest can sin and Jesus picks up the slack. After all, if the priest is absolved, the other priest that's doing the confession isn't absolving him. He is the via medium having Jesus absolve him. Wow. You know? Right. So that's what they're saying right there. Or do you oh, think yes, it's... It, it, well, go ahead, I'm sorry. Yeah. Right. Do you think it's, it's... They actually don't actually believe in Krishna consciousness and they're just doing it to get uh, material benefit? Oh, I think they believe in it the way the Catholic priests believe in Jesus. What they do you believe mean? Jesus is great. Well, that, that if you sin, you confess, you'll be absolved, you do a penance. Well, I mean, what, what's, the, what's the difference, really, between what they're doing and what the Catholics are doing? The Catholics don't have any lack of faith. Their faith is just misplaced, just like <laughs> the GBC... The gurus are created by the GBC. So the GBC has the power to empower a mortal being to become a guru? That's very strange, isn't it? Yeah, that very. makes no sense. Yeah, that makes no sense. So. so you can say, but you can also say the history of the Catholic Church, particularly uh, Cardinal Richelieu, at the time of the Three Musketeers and stuff like that, uh, Cardinal Richelieu was incredibly powerful politically, was immensely rich, and had palatial living quarters, but he was still functioning for the Pope. So as far as they're concerned, that's the ideal thing. But now we have Christian consciousness, which is a better bet than Jesus. We have Krishna to forgive whatever we do instead of Jesus forgiving whatever we do. And most devotees, obviously not all, because somebody painted a picture of Jesus and Krishna running hand in hand through the fields of God knows where, uh, that they, they understand that Krishna is on a higher platform than Jesus. They know that. Yes. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, most of them, at least. Well, of course they do. Because it's stated right there in the Shastra. <laughs> and I mean, if you read it, if they bother reading what Prabhupada said about Jesus, 
you want to see that Jesus, Jesus is from the planet of the avatars. I mean, the guru part is also stated who can be a guru, but they ignore that part, right? We can say that. Who says? Who I said the, the guru part is also stated in the neck of instruction. Therefore, initiation should be taken from an Uttamadakari. That part. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah. It's sort of like Jesus said, follow me, and they decided to throw their sins at him instead. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm not going to follow you. Eat our crap, please. Here's a big bowl full of crap. Now eat it all, mm -hmm. they say to Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus, for eating our crap. Hmm. Or vomit. Your yeah. garbage disposal, Jesus, or perhaps your toilet. Right. You just take whatever we dish out and you accept it. That's why we love you. Hmm. Mohit we, Prabhu. Love you. we love you be not because we want to serve God. We love you because we want ourselves and whoever we can convert Sorry, to I'm dump good. their yeah. crap on you. Uh, I just want to ask Mohit Prabhu a question. Mohit Prabhu, have you ever heard of the direction of management? Who? Mohit Prabhu. Mohit Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Yes. Have you ever heard of the direction of management? Oh, that's, yeah, you conducted it. Yeah, yeah, You have? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. So you're familiar with that document. Okay, that's good. So what do you, what, what do you make of it? Uh, ah, I see a soul rising up out of the material body and gloriously chanting the holy name. Hari Bol. Hari Krishna. Hari Krishna. Hari Krishna. Hari Bol. Hari Bol. Hari Bol. Mahaprabhu in the house. That, uh, uh, Ramachandra in the house. <laughs> that Hari 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 Bol. Ramachandra leading the pack. Yeah. Okay. So Mohit Prabhu, we're back to you now. Uh, yeah. Yes. Please go ahead. So, uh, what is going on here? One second. Somebody calling you, right? All right, I'm back. There was someone calling me, but I'll speak to them. Is it super important? No, no. Call okay. Join the if you want to talk to you, have them join the Zoom call. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. So, <laughs> A devotee. A devotee yes. is trying to help you. Yes, yes. Nice. Well, the Kanisada Kari is sacred because he has renounced the sense that he is his body. Has he realized it? No. But has he done so? <laughs> yes. Kanisada Kari has renounced his body as being the self. If you ask him, do you have a soul? He'll probably say yes. Why? Because he is forgetful and because he's identifying with his body. Mm. Even though it's getting more pure by the day by chanting it a bit. All right. So we are you know, the Gita. Okay. So any, anyhow, so to Mohit, did did he what did he explain what he believes the direction of management is supposed to be or do? Yes, Mohit Prabhu. This uh, do you know what the direction of management is and what is its purpose and why did Chile Prabhupada have it uh, uh, written and uh, he has referred to it many times? So do you know its importance? Uh, Prabhu, I know just a brief, just one, three lines of why Prabhupada created that and okay. why he didn't want it uh, a soul, uh, soul management type of thing being so run by a president. Yes. That's why, that's why he 
he gave every uh, every temple a separate authority so uh, whatever donations which they get they can't transfer it it is to be kept in a specific uh, temple no distribution here and there every temple is on its own this is how the management is created that's what i know hari krishna or and the meetings are done in the gbc so hmm. if anyone has any issues the seniors the gbc members can can go but the funds and the donations are specific to every uh, every temple acha okay so why yeah. not why not acquaint ram chandra why don't you briefly acquaint uh well he with the basic you know it's just like practically four sentences the uh the basic standard what is the gbc and what is it meant to do okay Uh, before we start we have another devotee joining from mexico he's a he's a wonderful preacher his name is krishna krishor das and uh, he's been preaching in different parts of the world he was in spain and other countries and now he's at home base in mexico so he's starting a varnashram farm project in mexico so mm-hmm. krishna krishor prabhu hari 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 bol can you hari krishna Can you introduce yourself and your wonderful family there? Hare Krishna. He, do you have a picture? Do, do you see him? Do oh, he's there. Krishna yeah. Kishore does. This is my glory to Shila Prabhupada. Um, Prabhupada. Well, what was Prabhupada? Prabhu? Actually, he's not Prabhu my... Prabhuji, they come... But actually, they come... So they come... Don't they live in the part of Mexico? Hmm. <laughs> Uh, Mexico City, but 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 now I'm in Colombia. We are uh, opening a center in a city called Sogamoso here in Colombia. Really? Are you from, you're from DF? DF, Ciudad de México. Soy de la Ciudad de México, pero no, estoy en Colombia ahorita. Uh, Originalmente uh, soy de la Ciudad de México. Trabajando con la directora de arte en DF. <laughs> anyway, I'll stop speaking. Al español. You know, yeah. felicidades. Uh, see, Nar- 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 Narayan Prabhu is from a, a, you know, I don't want to take it to the material context, but he's from a, a Jewish rabbi family, but he speaks fluent Spanish. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. Which is rare. I should be a Sephardic Jew, but not, uh, my dad was a Ashkenazi Jew, which means European Jew, but if you're Sephardic, you probably speak Spanish. Yeah, <laughs> or Persian, mm-hmm. or maybe Persian. Yeah. Hare so, Krishna, Krishna, hermano. Uh, Krishna Kishore, you probably know all the devotees here. Narayan Prabhu joined in 1968, and uh, we have Rupa Manjari Prabhu. She also uh, joined. I don't know, 15 years ago or something. And uh, Rupa. And uh, Haribo. Have, yeah. Haribo. And then we have Mohit Prabhu. He's been uh, he's been in the Krishna consciousness movement for how long now, Prabhu? A couple of years, several four, years. Four years. Four years. Four, four years. Yes. So we were just having a discussion of the direction of management. That uh, Krishna Kishore Prabhu, you have heard of the document "Direction of Management" by Shri Prabhupada? Yes, Prabhu, the Dom. Yes, yes, here I am. Yes, so we were just having a discussion about that. So if you have any questions regarding that, you can ask Nar- Narayan Prabhu and uh, Rupa Manjari Prabhu. Her name is coming Rupa up. Rupa Manjari has a sharp understanding of it. Yeah, she... But we she, also want to hear about his cow project in Colombia. Yes, he, yes. <laughs> For sure. Yes. So, uh, Prabhu, so what's going on there? What's going on in Mexico? You have, in Mexico, well, in Mexico, we are organizing a farm community in a city called Puerto Escondido, Oaxaca, and also nice. a, a temple in Mexico City. And in Colombia, I came here like three months ago, and then I I will stay here for three months more until I get the, the residence because it is needed to get um, uh, the center here. Uh, so next, uh, from this uh, Saturday to the next Saturday. But sorry, my English is not perfect, but... Your English I mean, is excellent. 
Fantastic. Yeah. Um, How excellent. 29th uh, of this month, I will have a celebration here where we will meet with four devotees. One of the devotees is coming from Canada and he's the architect, architect who is designing the the, the temple in Puerto Escondido, Oaxaca, the farm community. Oh, how wonderful. Yeah, actually, it's not that I'm doing all the things. It's just I'm trying to, to participate. But all the, the other devotees are the, the ones who are doing like, like, like all the things. I mean, we are publishing a, a magazine that maybe Rana Prabhu, he knows, because he knows Mahatma Prabhu. We are publishing a, the Back to Krishna magazine in English. And uh, the Vuelta Krishna in Spanish, the, the, the magazine will be printed and also online version. We are registering the trademark and also the copyrights of the of the names. Yeah, fantastic. In, That's in fantastic. It sounds like you're very well. Are you are you trained up in a light a line of business? Like are you a lawyer or a businessman or what what's your background? Uh, well, I'm a civil engineer. Uh, I studied in Mexico City, uh, but actually I'm working as a web designer and also as a programmer, uh, web apps, mobile apps. So uh, actually I'm not working civil engineer. Uh, oh, but that's, a, that's wonderful. We have yeah. Krishna. Are, are you, are you a, a grihasta or a brahmachari or... No, no, he has that. I live in, in Spain. Uh, maybe you know Bhaktivedanta lives in Sound Society, Puruji Prabhu. I live uh, with them for around one year and a half. Then I had to move to back to Mexico City because I didn't have their, their residence. I was uh, living there as uh, an illegal. Uh, so I had to move to, to Mexico City. And then from there, uh, things started to to happen by the mercy of Sheila Prabhupada. And yeah, now I'm I'm in Colombia. I will have, uh, well, we will register the, the magazine, uh, the Vuelta Krishna here in Colombia. We will print at least 5,000 uh, copies of the magazine. And then I go back to Mexico City to re register the, the magazine and to print another 5,000 uh, copies and also to register a religious association so we can buy the, the lands in Puerto Escondido and start building because there are some devotees uh, from Ukraine, China, and Germany, and USA that are willing already to come to, to live to Puerto Escondido and also other devotees from Mexico City and other states of Mexico that want to go to live there. So we buy the lands and start uh, uh, building at least something so devotees can, can stay there. Uh, and then we... We will try for the Mexico City Temple. Now is not like like very likely to have it because because of the COVID uh, situation in Mexico City, uh, many things are closed. So I think it's not a proper time to 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 do it now because because we will have to pay, to pay for for the rent of, of a place that will stay uh, closed because of the loss of the government. So we will try first of all for Puerto Escondido then we will move for, for Mexico City. And regarding Colombia, there are already three devotees that we will take charge of the of the center here in Colombia. And then I will go go uh, Mexico City, Colombia, Mexico City, Colombia. Wow, amazing. Wow, you're traveling and preaching and opening centers and temples. That's what Prabhupada wanted <laughs> in doing that. It's very good. Hare Krishna, hermano. So, Hare. Is, is, Prabhu, uh, are, are you, you're not working inside the GDC, I take it. No. You're working ind independently from the ISKCON structure for the most part? Sure, actually, I, I, I first of all, uh, well, how I was introduced to Krishna consciousness, it was because I, I found uh, an old book of Srila Prabhupada. And then with this book, I started uh, following what the, the book was saying for around one year. Uh, and wow. then I, I got to know that there, there, were, there were devotees, there were temples. Uh, and then after one year, I went to Iscon Temple in Mexico City. But then I stayed there for four months. 
because you know they were pushing me like you, you, you must take a guru you must take a guru but you know all this one year i always felt that Prabhupada was was my guru so yes it didn't match with, it didn't match with me and then i just uh, dropped out from iscon and then i started uh, printing uh, some pamphlets some some booklets uh, because they didn't want uh, they didn't want to to sell me books so then i i start printing uh for my uh, how to say it, uh, the books hila Prabhat's books on my wow. and then and then i i got to know like three four years ago it happened that happened like nine years ago something like that eight years ago and four years ago wow. three years ago i met uh Pruyet, uh by internet I, I mean on internet and then i was i was uh, yeah uh, I was who, 25 years old. Who, who did you meet? Purujit. Purujit. Huh? Purujit? There's a devotee online. He he has his uh, he has a sangha that they were associated with together. In uh, wow. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, and then I I well, Macanchor, uh, one of the brahmacharis, uh, went to to Mexico City, and then there he he was. Um, the devotee who I stay with like two weeks, two weeks, something like that. And then at that time, I was still a student. I was like 25 years old. And then next year, I just moved to, to Spain. I, I had to, to leave the school because of that. And then I, I moved to, to Spain. And then I had to go to come back to, to Mexico City, now Colombia. And I don't know, I would like to go to, to England because there are some devotees there that maybe you may know. Uh, this Rina Patel, Tapasya Prabhu, Parijata uh, Mataji, there in London also Greg Prabhu uh, is a uh, uh, Prabhupada's disciple in, in there. So they want to open a center there. So it would be nice to go there and also to print the, the magazine back to Krishna there. Because in, in USA, there is one devotee from Harvard that in cooperation with Rana Prabhu will print uh, 10,000 copies of the magazine back to Krishna and play the magazine in Harvard and also in the in, uh, Technology uh, Institute of Massachusetts. Uh, wow. and we can You're busy. It. That is incredible. Busy, we can, busy. We can, we can print it in England, in, in London, and then these devotees can take charge of the printing and, and distribution. And I don't know, in future, uh, China maybe, because we, we are uh, cooperating with some devotees from China, that also uh, they are helping us so we can travel to, to China and let's see to do something there. Hare Krishna. Oh. <laughs> you know, are, are you in contact with the devotee who prints books in China? Prabhupada's original books? Uh, Subarna Krishna Prabhu or Gitarati Prabhu? He's not from China, Gitarati Prabhu, but I know Subarna Krishna Prabhu from China. Maybe you Is that the same person? I'm trying to remember his name. Do you remember? Girarati? Girarati, yes. No, no, they don't know who Girarati is. I don't think so, at least. Girarati prints millions of Prabhupada's original books in China. Okay. Uh, Rupa Manjari Prabhu wanted to say something. Go ahead. Oh, um, at uh, Krishna Kishore Das, um, I think that Purijit and... Uh, um, Maitreya Rishi, they're in London. Yeah, they are in London now. They 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 were in Spain, uh, near Fuengirola, where the temple was located. Then they moved to another part of Spain. Then they moved to London, and they are there in London. And I think Matanchor is in Slovakia, and Paramahamsa Prabhu is, is in Slovakia, I think. He went back to Slovakia. Yes, wow. and uh, Makanchor just... Uh, got married to Sabina Mataji. Yeah, I saw. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Oh. So oh. that's that. <laughs> <laughs> that's incredible. So, um, uh, how how many devotees are you basically dealing with, Prabhu? Um, around forty devotees around the world. Forty. That's great. 
maximum 50%. Are, are, are you involved at all with like the people from Dr. Prabhupada magazine? Back to no, from the IRM, no. The, the only approach, is Mahatma Prabhu, I think he, he has approached uh, Krishna Kant's Prabhu. And also sometimes I send the newsletter to the IRM uh, email. But so far uh, approaching with, with them, uh, I don't have any approach personally with them. Actually, I don't know many of the devotees. Like, I don't know, sometimes Mahatma Prabhu... Uh, yeah, I know I know them because some videos because of what had happened uh, in the movement, Yashoda Nandana Prabhu, this Rivati Nandana Prabhu, like that. But I I haven't had like approach with them also because this barrier that that I don't speak like that very nice English. And and I don't know because you know I was like kind of isolated for six years, only reading Shila Prabhupada's books, no no devotees, nothing, not on internet, not physically. So it has been like three years ago that I contacted first of all uh, Purujit Makanchur that I started associating with Srila Prabhupada's disciple. But before that, wow. I was you know, all that time, six, seven that years. I'm really, Prabhu, offer, I offer you my deepest respects. Okay. I think because humble, of the... Humble Please accept my respects, humble respects. What you're doing is wonderful. Obviously, you're continuing from your previous life, your previous birth. Try. Amazing. Obviously. <laughs> now, uh, when it comes to cows, uh, are you trying to cultivate local cows or are you going to try to get Indian desi cows? Oh, get cows. Actually, the place where we uh, install the, uh, we will develop the farm. Uh, most of the cows are Indian cows. What? What kind of cows? Your voice is cutting out, Prabhu. Uh, Indian cows. There is oh. Indian cows in, in Indo. Yeah, most of the cows are Indian cows because they they came uh, from India to Brazil and then from Brazil. They went to to Mexico to Puerto Escondido. So most of the cows in Mexico in Puerto Escondido are Gesi cows, Indian cows. So these cows have humps on their backs. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Actually, uh, they call them there uh, Brahman, Brahman cows. Brahman cows, yeah. Brahman cows. They yeah. see. I think they see means what from the east or from home or something of that sort. Home means home. It means home. Rupa Majari is quite, quite deep, as am I, deeply, deeply interested in creating Varnashram Dharma, Prabhupada's idea of Dava Varnashram Dharma. Well, guy, yeah, yeah, Krishna Kishore Prabhu is here, so. Uh, yes. He, this he could be contact. the opening of a majestic door into the future. Yes, yeah. he has contact about the cows. There's also cows in Texas, but I'm sure. Uh, if we got well, a farm, we have somewhere. to check those cows out because they were brought here. Some of them were crossbred because they wanted to create Indian cows because they could live on the harsh land better. And then they bred them with the local cows because they wanted yeah. to make beef, beef cattle out of them. Hmm. So, but I'm sure, uh, Super Majority assures me that they do have pure Indian cows in Texas as well. Texas and Florida. That's wonderful. You see, ultimately, uh, what we're looking at, the cows, the, the cows, protecting cows, yes. But you know, when people like Nugandavan, Gita Nagri, and people that have cows here and there in Hawaii, <coughs> they are, in a sense, exploiting the cows. They're not killing them, okay? That's nice but they're exploiting them as a means of supporting themselves by taking the cow's milk and selling it in the form of butter, meat, cheese, whatever, you know. And um, the, that's a, a good place to start. But the ultimate goal that Prabhupada really wanted was Varnashram, meaning division. Like you have 2,000 people in a community, uh, you know, gets up to... 10,000 acres of land, say, or 5,000 acres of land. And in that community, you have shudras, 
who are the majority, you know, it's like a pyramid. In every human society, in every country of the world, the majority of people are at the bottom, workers, labor. Shudras got a bad name, but it shouldn't, because Shudras means a God-conscious God worker who works and assists all the other varnas, meaning he comes and assists the Vaishas. And what do the Vaishas do? They serve the cows. You see, protecting cows is one thing. Serving the cows is another thing. Because in the Varnashram society, then you have Chatriyas also. Chatriyas protect your community from marauders and invaders. And then Brahmins. So no money is needed. Zero. In, a, in, a, in the Varnashram system, no money is required. Uh, Prabhupada said, non no nonsense businessmen. What you have is um, Brahmins see to it that everyone has enough. So nobody needs to own a house. Each person, each family can have, build, or be given a dwelling that they get to keep, but they don't own it. They, it's everything. Or they, my model is around Lord Jagannath, the way it was in Puri, that Krishna owns the land. He owns everything on the land. And he owns my clothes. He owns my ox, my ox cart. He owns my plow. Krishna owns everything. I am simply using these things in his service. So when we have the four varnas, a few little Brahmins at the top, Kshatriyas enough to guard the borders, then Vaishyas, working very hard to cultivate crops for eating and wearing clothes like cotton or silk, and then cows. And what are the cows? We know there's seven mothers. We have seven mothers, and the cow is the most damaged mother in the world today, but the cow in the Varnashram community is, not, is our mother. What? The, the cow, who's there? Well, we got Vashish in the house. Who? Vashish Prabhu. Oh, giant. So, uh, so the cows, the cow is our mother. So in the Varnashram Dharma, in cow protection with Varna and Ashrama, everybody is working to protect the cows because the cow, we belong to the cow. Just like I belong to my mother. When I'm growing up, I'm not going this way and that way. I must go according to my mother. So we must go according to our mother, the cow. And in that sense, the cow is taking care of us. more than it's, We are being protected by cows more than cows are protecting us. Hmm. So when you have that situation of being protected by cows, then you, just like you will produce for your mother a place to, you create a place to live, you can create a place to work, everything is there for the benefit so your mother can have babies, like brothers and sisters for you, and your mother can then feed everybody mm. with the milk products. So the milk products all get taken up to the temple, like Jagannath Puri, the reason I use the example of Jagannath Puri is because in Puri, Jagannath Puri, they have, Prabhupada said, you can go into Jagannath Puri at any time of the day, unannounced with 50,000 men, sit down, and they will feed you complete prasadam there. That's how powerful the cooking is in Puri, in Jagannath Temple. So I like to think in the projects I want to envision for People that I know, you know, everyone does their own project, of course, in the way they want to do it. But what I am thinking in my own category is that the the temple would be like Jagannath Puri Temple. All the people in the community don't need to cook in their own house. They can go to the temple four or five, ten times a day and eat. And all the, the ghee is brought, the butter is brought there, they make ghee, the uh, paneer is made. Everything is made from the cow products there. 
And then all the crops are brought there, and the priests, the pandas in the temple, the priests of the Brahmins, cook everything. And also when there's cloth, they distribute to everyone. Mm. And they distribute according to the need. They, Prabhupada called the, uh, I'm sure you've encountered this, Prabhupada, that Prabhupada called this uh, Varnash of Dharma spiritual communism. Now, he hated, he didn't like communism. He went to Russia, didn't like it. Everybody said, you're saying communism this, communism that. Then you go and see communism, you don't like it. They probably said, that's not real communism. But he said, Varnashram Dharma, the four Varnas and the four Ashramas, the, that is spiritual communism. And what is the thief motto of spiritual communism? from each according to his ability to each according to his need. So everybody works to their full capacity and everybody gets what they need. So if a Vaisha, you think a big, big fat businessman, no, he doesn't make any cash. Well, he must have the biggest house. No, if he has got two children and the Shudra has 10 children, the Shudra has a bigger house than the man with two children. Because he doesn't need a bigger house. Mm -hmm. He just needs a place to come, to sleep, to brush his teeth, take his bath, and then goes back out to take care of the cows, helped by the Shudras, protected by the Chatriyas, and perfected and purified by the Brahmins. Few Brahmins, just 5% maybe. Okay. And with that context, I'm sorry, I'm taking a lot of your time, but that context then creates an atmosphere of from each, everyone works to its ability without thought. And everyone receives according to his need. So does the Shudra's wife get jewelry? Of course. Does she get beautiful saris, hand-woven saris, hand-woven by Shudra's under the crops produced by Vaishas? Of course. And does the, do the Brahmins get what they need? Yes, but Brahmins, real ones, are not lords. They are servants. So they're pujaris. They get beautiful clothes to serve the deity. Yep. And they have the right sort of simple cloth for doing their service in the temple. Yes. And they're assisted by shudras that are clean and well cared for. Yes. Now, so do the shudras, are they slaves? They work without money? Yeah, they're not slaves, they're servants, but they do work without money. But so does the Vaishya work without money, and the Chatriya works without money, and the Brahmin works without money. But wherever goods are required, they are distributed. So clothing, silk saris, cotton saris, whatever is needed, linen, that's mm -hmm. all, this, all distributed to the different Varna, members of the Varnash of Dharma. Mm. So if one has a big, big house and one has a small house. Now, when a person's kids are all grow up and they get their own place, or maybe they all live communally in a big lodge, which is an old ancient Indian way as well. Native Americans did like that. Tibetans have done like that. Uh, in India, they've done like that. And also in Europe, in the times before the Vikings, they did like that. They'd have big lodge houses. And in the lodge houses, all the women and children would live. They'd all work communally. But we don't need people to do cook communally. The Brahmins will cook. And who will help the Brahmins? Well, the Shudras, of course. They're the most biggest majority of people in the society. So you see, everybody mm -hmm. will be interacting on that level. That is as close to Krishna Loka as you're going to get on planet Earth. Okay. Do you uh, like that? <laughs> Krishna Kishore Prabhu. If, Hare Krishna. Yes. Hare Krishna. <laughs> there are Prabhu from Colombia here. He's me. here. Yes, he's here. What yes. does he think? Yeah, I was here. I, I, I just uh, I just regret that I didn't record what uh Narayan Prabhu was saying, but I actually uh, that was what I was missing. Well, it, it's it's been archived on Facebook and YouTube, so I'll send you the link. Everything is being recorded and broadcast. Uh, yeah. 
also okay. uh, if you yes please uh, please get, ask questions uh, if you have any questions uh, this is the place to ask so this is yeah. what well, you're the, doing the work i'm simply sitting in a chair <laughs> But I see the vision because I heard what Prabhupada said. I've read what Prabhupada wrote or spoke. I, he didn't write, but what he spoke about Varnashram Dharma. And it's clear what he wants. And New Vrindavan made it into a, into a concentration camp for cows. Gidanagri turned it into a homeless shelter for cows. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, they're all de demoniac in terms of what they want. You know, you're not going to need automobiles. Well, it's hard to say. If you have like a farm of 10,000 people, they're all going to be interacting. Maybe you have ox, mostly ox carts, but you maybe have an automobile or two if you have to go to a distance. But we don't need that stuff. Don't need machinery. And we won't need Everybody won't need to have a, uh, you know, computer and stuff like that. Uh, why? You know? But they can only insofar as they want to listen to Prabhupada and chant and Prabhupada and, and also all the chanting would all be done by the melodies brought from Krishna Loka with Srila Prabhupada. He brought our right melodies but because we refused to chant them, he was too polite and too tolerant and too kind and too forgiving. I won't say merciful, because merciful is the melodies that he brought from Krishna Loka. But he kind and forgiving he was to allow us to go on without using those melodies. But now it's time to go back to the beginning and begin the ISKCON movement from 1966 going forward from the creation of ISKCON movement by the charter uh, for ISKCON, now it's time to go forward. And by going forward, it means recreating, going back and listening to Prabhupada's lectures of 1966. You can do it. They're, on, they're easy to get to. If you have a cell phone or computer, you can do it. You listen to everything he's instructing and then say, wait a minute, we didn't really do it like that. We did some of it, or we took it, did it as much as we could. We did it in whatever way we felt was best. But remember, we were bringing malacha and sinful mentality into the arena of the temple, which is supposedly a place of shelter from sinful life. Well, it was, and it is still, because the Kanista Adhikari, there's three, Kanista, Madhyam, Uttama Adhikari. The Kanista Adhikari is ISKCON. It's Kanista Adhikari. They are people following the regulated principles means you're tempted to break them. Therefore, it's a group of people that are restraining themselves from breaking four regulated principles. They have to vow that in order to join the temple. They chant Hare Krishna deeds. They read Prabhupada's books, what's left of them. And they... Um, they, uh, you can get unchanged books, and they take Krishna Prashadam, and they listen to Prabhupada lecture. They chant Japa in the temple. They worship the deity installed by Prabhupada. And if somebody has a temple, is deity installed by Prabhupada, and he goes and opens up a temple and puts in deities and worships in the same way, those deities are also installed by Prabhupada. Every deity in this god is installed by Prabhupada. As long as it's the deities that he installed. No Durga in the, in the temple or no Shiva in the temple like that. But Krishna, Gurnitai, Radha Krishna, and Jagannath, yes. That is established all over the world now. So if I may say, uh, we need to go back and begin this going all over again with the wisdom of decades now. We can look back like scholars and look at the movement and say, oh, tut tut, I see things went off the track there. Oh, the GBC is supposed to be elected every three years. And all these 12 men signed their names and their soul and their life to observing that vow 
that the GBC would be elected every three years. And because they understand that whatever the spiritual master, you ex all you, you accept everything he says and reject nothing that he says, and you don't introduce anything of your own. You just accept the spiritual master, act on that. That is what is called a disciple. Because disciple means discipline, disciplina. Discipline means that you are restrained from doing what you please, but you give that up at initiation to do what your spiritual master pleases you to do, instructs you to do. And for whose benefit? If I accept the teaching of Prabhupada, who benefits? Oh, the whole movement, oh, I get a bunch of disciples, oh, we bring in a lot of money, oh, this or that. No. If I follow Prabhupada's order, instruction, guidance, if I go into the mood of Srila Prabhupada's way of doing things, then I benefit. And when I benefit, I give up the greed of wanting to be saved like a Christian being saved by Jesus. I give up that greed and begin to share that sense of becoming saved by Prabhupada to others. In that what? way, we can create the Varnashram Dharma in the Daiva Varnashram Dharma. And Prabhupada actually, one last thing I'll say is that Prabhupada said the Varnashram Dharma of the Vedic time was not on the level of the Daiva Varnashram Dharma. Because Daiva Varnashram Dharma, everyone is initiated. Everyone is a, begins out and can start occurring. Why, why is it number 12? What's number 12? Why 12? 12 who? 12 disciples. Uh, 12 GBC. Oh, 12 GBC? Well, that's just how they decided it. Who knows? Who knows? I don't think they were modeling themselves after Jesus' 12 disciples, particularly since one of them was Judas Iscariot. <laughs> So, um, and the rest seem to be largely mythological. Who are the 12? Okay, so um, Krishna Kishore Prabhu made a comment here, so I just want to read it. Hare Krishna to all for welcoming me into your session. It was my pleasure to hear all of you, specifically, specific, specifically Narayan Narayan Prabhu. Did he leave? No, he's still here. So, Krishna oh. Kishore, Prabhu, you can ask your question. So, Narayan Prabhu can make it clear. Go ahead. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Sorry, but my internet connection, I think, is not that strong. So, I lost uh, some parts. Uh, but then, oh. uh, Narayan Prabhu was speaking about something that everyone was initiated. Would you repeat it about that? Because I, I, I didn't hear that it but, was like that. He didn't hear. He, he's talking. saying something about initiation you mentioned. Uh, everyone was initiated. Is Before one devotee asked, uh, why 12? Why 12? And then oh. another. Oh, 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 yeah. Uh, there's no given reason. Uh, I There's a possible reason because Prabhupada's guru, Bhakti Siddhanta, may have had 12. And Bhakti Siddhanta modeled his. GBC, which never came into existence because his disciples refused to do it. Uh, Bhakti Siddhanta modeled his after the uh, British Indian railway system. So it's very possible that they had 12. That's a matter of research. But let us say, if Prabhupada, my, my Lord and Master Prabhupada said 12, I don't need to know why. But, it was, but if we can find out why, it'll be interesting. Okay. Yes, so, Krishna Prabhu, if you have any questions, Hare you can ask Narayan Hare Prabhu. Krishna. Hare Krishna. Specifically about Parnadana Dharma. Yes, Vashish Prabhu. Yes. Hare Krishna. Yes, Vashish Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Yes. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hope you're all fine. Yeah, I was listening to 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 I don't know. I think Prabhu Mah, uh, Mark, Prabhu Mark and Kishore, Prabhu Krishna Kishore, was asking about the twelve. 
Well, and and as you said, it was Prabhupada's wish. Prabhupada wanted to uh, to select twelve people to manage as GBC. He wanted to appoint uh, select only twelve GBC members to to carry out uh, the what to say the money for managing is gone. Actually, well, actually they're, Prabhupada, they're twelve, but they are elected every three years. He never told them not to be elected. Right? Vashish Prabhu? Sorry. Hare Krishna Prabhu? Is Vashish there? Vashish Prabhu is there. So I have a doubt. Hare Krishna. So Prabhupada said 12, and then after three years, eight would be replaced by other temple presidents by election of the temple presidents. Four would remain. And then the next three years, then they would rotate out again. So they'd always be rotating from the temple, temple presidents. The temple presidents would become GBC. Prabhupada never changed that. In fact, he no. reinforced that in his topmost urgency letter in 1974. Uh, Narayan. Yes. Um, Krishna Kishore Das, his question was about before the talk about the 12, when you were talking about Daivavarnashram Dharma, you said that everyone would be initiated. He was asking what about everyone being initiated? Oh, well, yes. So like in the Vedic culture, oh yeah, this I just didn't complete it. In the Vedic culture, you know, you have the Malachas and they take birth eventually as Shudras. And the Shudras take birth eventually as Vaishyas, and Vaishyas take birth eventually as Chatriyas, and Chatriyas take birth, birth eventually as Brahmins. Prabhupada said the Kanista Arakari is the person who says, Aham Brahmasmi. I am part and parcel. Aham Brahmasmi means uh, simultaneously and inconceivably one and different than Krishna. <coughs> the the Mayavadi says I am Krishna, meaning I am equal to Krishna, meaning I merge and become Krishna and give up my silly little identity. The Vaishnava, however, says no, I retain my identity, which is part and parcel of Krishna, therefore far from silly. And as a as the part and parcel of Krishna, Aham Brahmasmi, I am Brahman, meaning. I am part and parcel of Krishna. Not Krishna, but part and parcel of Krishna. Okay, so Prabhupada said that the, the Daivavan Ashram starts from that position. Even the Shudra is above the Brahman in the previous Yugas. Because the Yugas, the Brahmins in the previous Yugas were busy trying to help people raise their karma so they could go to higher material planets, heavenly planets. Kshatriyas wanted to die in battle and go to the sun planet. You see? So they're all trying to fulfill their material desire and rarify their material desire into a higher heavenly planet life rather than an earthly planet life. But the Varnashram Dharma, Daiva Varnashram Dharma, the Shudra, not the Shudra, the Kinnista Adhikari starts as above the Brahman of previous times because he's initiated as a devotee of Krishna. Disciple of Prabhupada means initiated by Krishna to become elevated gradually to the point of developing pure, unalloyed love of God and realizing his swarup, his, his, his form in which he can be with Krishna in a reciprocal relationship in the spiritual sky, in Krishna Loka. So the whole Brahman Shudras in the Daivavan Ashram are also initiated, just like anyone in this country. Well, better, I mean, with Prabhupada as a guru, of course. And then the, the Vaishya also initiated. The, the Chatriya also initiated. The Brahman also initiated. 
Now they don't all have to take Brahman initiation, just if they qualify. You know, you have to become the properly trained person to take and Brahman who's, initiation. Who's well, who's gonna who's gonna perform these initiations? The Brahmins. Okay. They performed them for Prabhupada in behalf of Prabhupada. That's the way it was done from 1970s onward, that the temple president would initiate everyone. What's a Brahmin? A Brahmin is a priest. Uh, and, but more it. than a priest, he's also a gourmet cook. And he also worships, yep, he also cares for the deity. And he also makes sure that all the members of human society are being treated equitably. Oh, and nobody it's... is cheating anybody. Nobody is offending anybody. Nobody <laughs> is doing anything, making a profit off of anyone. They're all, you don't need money. You don't need a profit. You don't have to make cash. All you need to do is work and you'll be fed and clothed and housed. And you get the best cow's milk in the universe, or at least on planet Earth. <clears throat> so why do you need money? What are you going to buy with it? Whiskey? No whiskey. You see? So that's the difference. So the, I hope that this answers your question, Prabhu, that the Dhanavanashram Dharma, cow protection, means Above the Vedic culture, Brahman. Even the Shudra is above the Vedic culture, Brahman. Because he's a devotee of Krishna. Okay, so uh, just uh, before, uh, Krishna Kishore Prabhu has to go. So I just want to make that clear. So Oh, no. He funny. liked your answer and he's going to try to join us more and more as I think he's traveling and preaching. So it's saying his internet That's connection wonderful. is not very stable. So, yes. So, Krishna Krishna, you're very welcome to participate. We'll add you to our WhatsApp group. So, whenever we send out the Zoom links, you'll get it. Could, so you, ask, could you ask Krishna Kishore, what, did he ever hear anything like that described of the Varnashram, Daiva Varnashram, before? Yes, I think uh, we can ask him. Did he Krishna leave? Kishore, Prabhu, did, is he still there? Yes, I think he's still here. He said, I never heard that. So his answer. Yeah, that. That's interesting, isn't it? Yeah. But that's how we that's how car protection is supposed to be done. Okay. So I think he's leaving. So thank you very much, Krishna Krishna. Hare Krishna, Krishna Prabhu, my deepest obeisances to you. I talk about cows, you actually protect cows. So you're way above me. Way yeah. above me. All right, Haribo. Okay, now we have Vashish back in the house. Jai Vashish. <laughs> Vashish is my senior godbrother. Where is he? He's joining. Okay. Okay, now he's in. Vashish okay. Prabhu, you are my senior godbrother. You, you got to repeat it again. He was not in the house. Well, tell him what I said. Vashish Prabhu, Narayan Prabhu said, you're his senior god brother. Hey, no, no. <laughs> no, yes, because you have superb reasoning power. Jai, Vashish Prabhu. No. It's, all, it, it's, all, it's all, thanks, all, all because of my seniors, actually. And yeah, Jai. all Prabhupada's senior disciples, I mean, uh, yeah, senior Prabhupada's senior disciples, yeah. We are all my bodies. There's no use in us, any of us. What you need to do is find Prabhupada. And the deci senior disciples are people who took place in conspiring against them from the very beginning. Not all of them, but, no. Maybe it, it, it was a lesson well, for all, us. All of us, because we haven't perfected what he wanted yet. <laughs> yeah, but, but it's a process. That, that's, why, that's why I'm also, uh, what to say... It's it's a lesson actually for for all of us for succeeding generations for for the Krishna conscious movement for ten thousand years, okay for yes. for us to learn what happened, and 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 we have to learn. Oh from no, it. no no no! We're not going to burn the books. We're not going to tear up the history of ISKCON. Not even the Lilamrita, which deserves to be burned up, 
for <laughs> it being such a fake book. But the thing is that, no, what I'm saying is, we, we, I'm alive, you're alive. We can go back to the very beginning in 1966 and start recreating the relationship of this guru and disciple with us to Prabhupada starting from the beginning. And you'll find out by the time we get up to the theoretical off point of 1978, ISKCON that we have recreated will be a million times more relishable than the ISKCON that was there in 1978. Yes, yes, Prabhu. I, I totally agree with you because now, because earlier you were all, all of your God brothers at that time when, when you recently newly joined. Maybe, not maybe, but most probably all of you, almost all of you, they didn't know the actual position of Prabhupada, actually. The way information is being accessible, Prabhupada's teaching, teachings are accessible right now. Earlier, yes. earlier, yeah, through sure. internet. Prabhupada anything. left behind such a legacy. Yes. In his uh, body, he left such a legacy, not just books, but very importantly, Everything. his own personal sound vibration. Yes, yes. And one more thing, Babu. Maybe, maybe one person, maybe, maybe one person or any, any devotee, even though he was in touch with Prabhupada, you can correct me, okay, if I'm wrong. Maybe if one person at that time was in touch with Prabhupada, he was serving him. But, the, but the way to the way things are today, the accessibility of information. If somebody wants to know something, because. You may, someone may be serving Prabhupada, but if he, if he was not in that level to get some very high instruction at that time, Prabhupada will, uh, of course, will know exactly. where, where, that, where that particular devotee is situated. Exactly. Yeah, would, you, would, would you believe that a lot of people that were in high place positions with Prabhupada, although they were devoted to Prabhupada, many of them actually hated Prabhupada? I, no, I, yeah, I can agree with you. Yeah, of course. Yes, they were envious yeah. of Prabhupada. Yes, that's why that's why we have so so many discrepancies, so so many deviations in in, in the movement today. It's, yeah, exactly, it's exactly. And even this question of chanting Prabhupada's melodies as quickly as they could. I was there when they were doing it in 1970 with the Chutananda. He was teaching them melodies that he made up. He was teaching them melodies from the Bengali fishermen. He was teaching them Ramakrishna melodies. <laughs> he, he was teaching them me, the melodies sung by eunuchs that go from door to door and beg or curse if they don't get what they want. Uh, he was teaching them all those melodies and telling Prabhupada's disciples, Prabhupada didn't give you the real melodies. Oh, oh well, but, but that's an offense. That's clearly an offense. Oh, you shouldn't say that. I heard him say yeah. that no, he, in he, Calcutta he in 19... Uh, 72. Yes, yeah. he said that. And then when I re looked at his book, the so-called Vaishnava Science Song Book, everybody has a copy, you know, this sort of horizontal book. I read through it and I said, where did these translations come from? And Chudananda said, I translated these songs of the Vaishnava Charyas. He said, why you translated? Prabhupada also translated. Prabhupada translated so beautifully. And why have you translated like this? He said, well, Prabhupada didn't translate them properly. Wow. He said that to me. Prabhu, Prabhu, you are saying something which is very, very, which, which is very new, actually, because that book, Vaishnava Acharya, Vaishnava Acharya Songbook, right? All, yeah. all devotees, all devotees in the, of Khan, okay, we are, we are using that book. And why we are using, and why we are using that book because in the preface or introduction itself, Prabhupada has already approved it, right? He said, yeah. he said like, because when uh, Achyutanand uh, Prabhu or Swami, he was Swami. I don't know if he was a sannyasi. Yeah. Uh, when Achyutanand uh, Prabhu uh, Swami, compiled yeah. this, yeah. When Achyutanand uh, Swami compiled this uh, the translation of of the Vaishnava Acharyas and presented it to Prabhupada, maybe he he already translated it. And he presented to Prabhupada. Maybe you will agree that Prabhapad approved it, isn't it? Prabhapad approved do you it. Want right? to, do, are, are you sitting down right now? And I can tell you 
the real story, what actually happened that Achutananda told me? Yes, go ahead. Okay, yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> yes, he was doing this Vaishnava songbook, and he said, we have to rush to get it to the press. So Prabhupada, could you write the, an introduction to put in front of the songbook? And Prabhupada wrote that introduction. When Prabhupada was shown the songbook in the draft form, he read through it and said, you cannot publish this. You cannot print this. It is so much is wrong. You cannot do that. Because he saw that Chachitanan had changed, retranslated all the songs of the Vaishnava Acharyas to be so much less poetic, so much less beautiful. And he said, you cannot print it. Do what Achyutananda said to me that he did. He sat up smirking and said, too bad, Srila Prabhupada. I already printed it. That's what actually happened. And I was there. And Achyutananda but, but told come, me. But how come? But how come? Okay, uh, maybe I have to read. The book is in front of me. Let me, let me read that, uh, that, uh, that, that uh, thing by Prabhupada, actually. Yeah? Okay. Uh, we have... I know the introduction. He wrote the introduction yeah, but... before he saw the book. Okay, introduction. Yes, he he, he only wrote the introduction. book. Then, yes, yes. If he had written the book, yeah, he would I, I, never I, I, have I given have that book. introduction. I have, I, have, I have the book in front of me right now. Okay. I I have I have the book in front of me. Maybe maybe Ramchand Babu can uh, can uh, can put uh, forward. In, in the screen of, of our... One second. Of one second, Vashish Prabhu. We have another... Just, but the one thing is, do me the kindness of understanding that Prabhupada wrote that introduction before, before he no. saw the manuscript. Yeah, it was a forward, actually. Yes, the forward. Yeah. I know all about it, of course. Yeah. Okay, we have another devotee here named... Uh, Prabhu, can you introduce yourself? You can unmute yourself one second. Ask to okay, go ahead. You can unmute yourself. Hare Krishna. Yes, go ahead. Jai. Nam Prabhu, can you say your name? Yes, Prabhu. So my name is Naman. Naman Duvedi. It's Naman actually. You can call me Naman. And I'm from Amsterdam actually. Oh. And from where? Yeah. From Amsterdam. Hare Krishna. Welcome. Hare Krishna. Amsterdam? Yes, yes. Wow. You don't look Dutch. <laughs> oh, I was I'm there. not Dutch. I'm actually from India, but I'm living in Amsterdam right now. I know. Yeah. I was kidding. You. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> well, how does it even matter? We are all just the soul, right? So. Right. Okay. So, Ita. Ita. How, how did you find out about our video? We are gloriously the soul. <laughs> Yes. So I I found out, well, I just, uh, like, it, it is early morning right now, and I'm doing actually Mridanga classes, and I just finished my Mridanga. It's an online class from Mayapur, you know, for people around the world. And I just finished my class, and I logged on to YouTube, and I saw the first thing, your stream is live. And, you know, I generally watch your videos sometimes, like many of your videos, and I find Fantastic. them. Fantastic. So I join in. And actually, I joined oh, well, it. I made this welcome, request. Welcome. Someone commented in the chat uh, about a particular are, are video. You, do you work in IT? Uh, well, no, not exactly. No, I don't work in IT. No. No. I'm actually a mechanical engineer by by uh, training uh, and well, even I can by. I tell profession. you a very disciplined cognitive mind, which is welcome here because this platform on our League for 10K is a place to cultivate cu cultivate rational minds. Okay. Because let, let, consciousness let, is perfectly comprehensible in its structure. I cannot understand what your rasa with Krishna is. That's way <laughs> out of the picture for me. Let, but, let, him, let him speak, Nayana Ryan. Let him speak. <laughs> Why? I, mean, yeah. I, I, just, I enjoy You're listening speak. to I'm not gonna let, let him You're speak. Speaking. <laughs> You're speaking. So go ahead, Prabhu. You can speak. No, no, no. So... And so it's like someone actually made a comment in the chat about a video uh, that uh, like uh, uh, Prabhu Ramachandra Singh Ji has uploaded, I think, on his like a long time ago, uh, 11 years ago, it seems, I just saw. And uh, it's a video called Srila Prabhupada Crown Jewel. 
and it's like uh, if you open the video you will see like it has millions of views 5 million views and you will see like prabhupad after he leaves his body the ceremony being carried out and uh, it, indeed like uh, the a person just commented that it's like a private affair and i i really like connected to this this is why i asked to join the call because yesterday i watched a video of uh, uh, shrila bhakti siddhanta saraswati where uh, like uh, he said not he does, uh, people like the narrator says that bhakti siddhanta saraswati uh, uh, shrila bhakti siddhanta saraswati always thought that private matters should be reserved for the family members so he would not let the for example rasalila right he on in all his writings he would never <coughs> rasalila there because he thought it is a private matter for the devotees of krishna only they should know about that and so when we see like a video like this like where shila prabhupad has left his body and it's an extremely private affair and you know uh, his body is being carried into the samadhi that also seems like a very private affair so i think this person would and i would agree with him to kindly request you to take this video uh, down because people like it should not be available for general public to see and comment and i oh. agree with that sentiment so please consider this request prabhu could i Hare put Krishna. A, a, a something out for your consideration for you to think prabhupad wanted all of his disciples to come to vrindavan in his last days if they had come there would have been 5000 people in vrindavan and that would not have been a very private affair it would have been a very it was a uh, strange Krishna. affair They drank. Babu, Babu, so. My brother, my brother died in November 10th uh, in as Bhakti Madhuri Govinda Goswami in Punjabi Bhag. They gave him a fantastic public affair in Vrindavan, carried him through the streets, covered with flowers, uh, everything like that. With Prabhupada, they dragged him in a little ordinary lap chair, you know. by ordinary coolies with only half a dozen people chanting and the people of Vrindavan didn't even know what was going on then they started lowering Prabhupada into his samadhi and they slipped and he started to fall i don't know if you ever saw that i just saw that I, i just yeah. saw that well there was no ceremony there at all yes. it was supposed to be a very powerful the at the 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 emissary of the yuga avatar who's the last acharya before the go- end of the golden age of kali is being thrown into a samadhi by malachas that he yeah I, i i definitely agree with you prabhu ji like it's very good sentiment and i agree with you and i think this person would also agree who pointed this out that uh, uh yes like uh, it it should this kind of footage should not be available for everyone to see you know it's very very private thing and uh, it should be it, because it is a shame it is a shame exactly yeah mm. outrageous but in the end it must be seen outrageous. otherwise we won't realize what offenses we have committed yes so do you think it should be available for the devotees or it should like still be available for everyone I don't have a view uh at this point I can't say part of me says it should be only for devotees and mm. part of me says who is not a devotee <laughs> we're reaching out to the ants the the dogs the cats you are also devotees so who who is going to be excluded from the devotee you see Every, everyone to- is welcome that's another so i have two minds on the subject as you might guess uh, and in our conflict as well but one thing i did share and i want to just re underline it again my brother bhakti madura govinda goswami who was two years younger than me passed away in november 10th he was given a much much nicer shraddha ceremony than prabhupada peace he was draped in flowers he was carried in state there was a big parade for him in vrindavan so if Christ. you showed that if you showed my brother some if you showed my brother being carried through the streets 
and said, oh, this is Prabhupada. And show Prabhupada, he said, oh, that's my brother. He wasn't up to much. We just threw him into his pit with the salt and the lime. You know, I mean, better they should trade them. Let my brother be the Prabhupada bun because it's so beautiful. And let Prabhupada be something that we cringe when we see it, which I do when I see it. There must be a message there somewhere. The message is Prabhupada was, Prabhupada was betrayed, just like Jesus was betrayed. Two questions to ask. And for Hare a very Krishna, similar I... reason, too. Yes, yes, Vashish Prabhu. Yes, your question. Uh, Vashish. Yes, I... you know, Vashish was, we were Vashish. dealing with Vashish, and then we got carried away here. Mamma mia, Vashish. I have I have a question for uh, to Naman Prabhu Naman. actually Naman Naman Nivedi Prabhu. Yeah, you you were talking about the introduction. Yes. No, Go no, ahead. no. He's oh, he left. That Naman Prabhu, Naman Prabhu, he left or is he's here? He's here. He's here. Yeah. Okay. We can we can. Uh, he's new. Okay. He's in the in the in the group. So he he raised an important point. So let's talk about that. About uh, what he said. Uh, about when, deep, uh, when deep, he said deep, uh, deep perception. About when Let's he said about uh, Rashish Prabhu. Hmm. Rashish Prabhu. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, when he said about the Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati Thakur, some quotes like uh, I don't know uh, he heard somebody quoting Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati Thakur but it should be a private affair or something like that. Can he explain more in detail actually what was the scenario, what happened actually? For uh, for him to come to a conclusion, but okay, Prabhupada's final 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 what to say final leader. That's a very good, thank you, thank you, Vashish. That's a wonderful question. I'd like to yeah. add to that question before yes, he answers. Yes, yes. And the, what I'd like to add to the question is: Was yeah. he talking only about Radha and Krishna and the Gopis' pastimes? That was it. Yeah. So, do we yeah, conclude? Yeah. That he didn't want people to become sahajas and dwell on the sexy activity of Krishna and the gopis. Anyhow, now go ahead. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes, Prabhu. So uh, that, that is exactly what you are right. That is what I was talking about. I mean, the video that I saw yesterday was when, uh, well, Srila Bhaktisdan Saraswati, he did a lot of work. He was the precursor to Srila Prabhupada. Before Prabhupada went to the West, people don't know this. There were already Western devotees that were like the devotees of Srila Bhaktisdan Saraswati. They like, were? Yes. yes. In, in, within like intellectual circles, actually. So his first yes. devotee, I forget his name, but uh, he was a German intellectual, like a professor. And he was yeah. uh, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati's first disciple who was from the West. Yeah. And so Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati knew that the future would be in this direction. It would be with you know someone going abroad and uh, like uh, fulfilling Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's prophecy of his name being chanted in every village and every town. So sh- he yeah. prepared Srila Prabhupada for this mission. And Srila Prabhupada, to the last day of his life, in uh, you know, in this in his body, he followed the message of Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. And for that reason, he was able to go to the West at the age of 70 and go through all the pains that he had to go through. But with that said, like the way one more ways that Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur trained Srila Prabhupada was by uh, by like putting in his mind that you know, book printing is the most important thing. Do anything, but book printing must always come first. Before the temples, before the kirtans, before everything, book printing comes first. So uh, this is why Prabhupada had such a strong focus on book printing. But uh, so uh, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur printed a lot of books uh, while he was in Vrindavan. And in those books, as you said, he he never put any of the Raslilas between, uh, you know, between the gopis and, and Sri Krishna. Uh, because he thought that it was a, a private affair, you know, uh, and uh, yeah, it doesn't directly relate to what I'm saying about the video. But uh, I do think that the idea of something being a private affair is kind of important. Uh, as Prabhuji pointed out that, you know, the, the, 
uh, last you know when a person leaves the body when a person like shila prabhupad leaves the body that affair should be glorious it should be public right it should be you know thousands and thousands of people coming as we have seen for so many politicians for actors and all these people so many people come for a personality like prabhupad it should be much greater than that but it was not but that doesn't matter what matters is the last point you know when when shila prabhupad is being lowered into the samadhi that still should be private in my opinion it's just my opinion but uh, that should still be a private affair and especially considering how badly it was handled how you know they slipped and the the body was almost fell it it is extremely rough to watch you know and it, when you watch something like that people like i i am not sure if people can handle that kind of you know video for a, such a great personality so it, it seems like this should be a private affair so i don't know if you agree with me but um yeah, it's it's an intuition within me that says that this this should not be available for everyone to see what would you say prabhu ramachandra ji uh, do you do you think differently or what i think all of us can can give our opinion okay let's talk to ramachandra prabhu that's nice oh regarding the video yeah i mean no we have a policy here that you know everything we do is public so that is something we follow and the video uh, also it's been public forever even if i remove it from my side it's already there in different websites so me removing it and uh, i'm sure it's getting a lot of views so if if they even watch it they'll benefit you know I, uh, that's the way i look at it you know even though it's a very uh, it's not really a uh, uh, you know people like you don't uh, appreciate it but there's parts of it maybe i can cut out that part and put it back you know Oh uh, maybe that would be better you know cut out that part so we can do that i i don't see a problem with that it's also valuable to see first hand how shrila prabhupad was treated and it gives an indication of the fact that something was amiss um to people who are paying attention hari krishna Hey Mataji, Mataji you didn't get your question. Can you can you please uh uh, uh repeat the question uh or, or opinion? I'm saying I that it's it's in my opinion it's valuable for people to see the truth yeah. that Srila Prabhupada was horrifically mistreated and that this will give them the understanding that Prabhupada was not properly followed by those who claim to be his highest most senior disciples does that make sense yes yeah that's yeah that's the an angle that i i i did not see but it really makes sense that if people see it then they'll be like oh this is how they treated shri prabhupad you know these so called disciples answering to hello some hello yes mohit prabhu Absolutely. go ahead mohit prabhu go ahead answering to navan uh, prabhu bro i think that uh, i mean through that video only through that views only many people are like waiting for how what's the last rituals for prabhupad right so they are getting kripa from there also by just looking to a body which which was like from the spiritual world which you can't uh, imagine so i think for a devotee like for a pure devotee like prabhupad uh, video should be taken out but rather than uh, for normal devotees it's very wrong but for prabhupad it's very important because he's the most purest devotee and people just looking towards him and can uh, can get blessings right no no i i agree like i think uh, um um so did you complete your point you can yeah yeah please go ahead i no, have no yeah. questions i'll ask that after you complete it now yes so like uh, i understand this completely and i agree with you 100% that we people just by watching prabhupad and just by watching him like they can get enlightenment just one look of a pure devotee right yes. one look of a pure devotee can change yes i 100% agree with that sentiment but uh, like not uh, before this uh, not with other senior devotees yes yeah. so before this ramachandra prabhu said that uh, you know he can cut out parts of that and i would say that you know, maybe you know 3 to 5 second the initial part if you can cut that part out 
I don't think that would make any difference to it because people can still watch the whole ritual. They can watch, you know, Prabhupada's last moments. They can watch what happens. Like he, they can see how Prabhupada, even on the bed where he's about to leave his body, he's still so focused. He's still so, so much focused on the message of Krishna. And that part will definitely be 100% enlightening for anyone to watch. But uh, specifically, the part that I'm referring to is like the three to five seconds where his body is being badly mistreated. And uh, I definitely understand Prabhuji's point that the video is already available. Once you upload something on the internet, you can never take it down truly. But uh, it does seem like this particular video is the most viewed one. It's like 5 million views 11 years ago from. So it seems like oh. this is the single most viewed one. So if we can just like edit this part out of this video and re-upload it maybe, then I don't think like anyone is losing out anything because they can still watch Srila Prabhupada, you know, as he leaves his I body. Have a million views? Yeah. I, is it? I don't think so. It's probably not from my channel. The one thing they would lose is the truth. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. If you look at it that way, yes, they'll see the truth that we, um, we need to we need to recreate this con so that Prabhupada you know if we need to recreate this con from the beginning. That's what of our League for 10K is doing. We're going to go back to the very beginning of this con and realize that nobody ever obeyed Prabhupada. We created a society of bodily conscious people that were dedicated to surrendering to Krishna called devotees. What is a devotee? He's a person in the bodily concept of life who has not yet come to the point of being the soul. You okay, see? this is the part you're, you're saying about, right? Yes, Prabhu. This is it's like if you just watch the initial part, it's extremely painful to watch. Like it really hurts me to watch this. Oh yeah, well, yeah, yeah. I see. Well, these people think they made a movie about Christ being beaten through the marketplaces and be brutally beaten so much so that the actor dislocated his jaw while being beaten. And the last temptation of Christ, and they put that in. <laughs> I think yeah. what we need is the lesson not to repeat the the not to repeat the thing of torturing the messenger from God to death and then gloating over his death by becoming a rich a rich disciple. Yeah. Well Prabhu, like I totally understand this point of view that, you know, good people are always mistreated. And this is definitely a sentiment that, you know, a lot of people would agree with regardless of which background they come from, that good people always seem to be mistreated in this world. But the point is that, you know, like when Christ is mistreated and, you know, he's crucified, he's treated much like very, very badly. But ultimately, it is those who truly believe in him who carry his spirit forward, right? So it's uh, like in this case, we are talking about his devotees who are themselves treating like not doing their job properly. So it's right. like, yeah, like, so it's one thing to say that it should be available for everyone to see and learn from, but it's also painful at the same time. So I am definitely split like as to what, you know, what should but, be done. In this case. I would like but, to ask your opinion. Well, Prabhu, you gave the example of Bhakti Siddhanta and the uh, gopi pastimes with Krishna. That we can understand is different. He was not wanting Krishna and the gopis to be converted into sex objects for the ignorant public. And I agree with that 100%. But Prabhupada is not in that category. Hiding Prabhupada, the truth of Prabhupada is not the same thing as hiding the truth of the gopis. And it's not private. Prabhupada wanted 5,000 disciples to come. Such Farouk sent out a message. I was ready to get on an airplane to come to Vrindavan in the last days. And Such Farouk sent out the order, no, Prabhupada wants you to stay back and do the Christmas marathon instead and make money for the movement instead. So nobody came. The real reason they wanted anyone to come because 
Nobody had seen pictures of Prabhupada emaciated and copper colored from arsenic poisoning. You know? Okay. I, I don't know that. <laughs> No, no, the, the guys that poisoned Prabhupada didn't want anyone to come. They didn't want anyone to come because they didn't want, because they hadn't sent any pictures. I was busy, I was, I was designing, I was the head of the art department in Los Angeles, New Dorca, for the BBT. And we, I had 15 artists working with me. And those 15 artists, would produce one painting every month. And we would ask through Ramashwar. Ramashwar would, would, would collect our questions, send them to Prabhupada, and Prabhupada would send the answers back. We had no idea that Prabhupada was emaciated. We had no idea that Prabhupada was copper colored. All we knew is we were doing painting the pictures for the Srimad Bhagavatam. I personally designed, supervised the paintings of the Srimad Bhagavatam from fifth canto to 10th canto. And so nobody, we nobody, che we no, nobody checked on him. Yeah, the people checking on him were the people that were there, but they didn't want anybody else to come unless they were part of the profiteering group. To give you an idea of That's profiteering, Bhavananda, Bhavananda, and Sudama was going to go back to Hawaii where he was the GBC, and Bhavananda came up to GB to Bhavananda to. Sudama, Sudama told me this personally before he died, years before he died, and he said, Sudama, you can't go back now. He said, why? He said, in a few days, Prabhupada is going to leave his body, and we're going to be dividing up the world. That's what Bhavananda said to Sudama. So does it any surprise that they would throw him into his samadhi? Injustice. Desecration. Desecration of a pure devotee. Wow. That's how we all end up. Hare Krishna. No, no, I'm Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hopefully not. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Bro. Bro, Hare Krishna. Uh, but Hare we need Krishna. to recreate this con. You see, everyone says, oh, it's gone went haywire at the end. They didn't, the, 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 the riffics didn't become, they called themselves regular gurus, et cetera, et cetera. And you no, know, Prabhupada knew exactly what was going on. He knew exactly who was doing what. He knew exactly, do you think Prabhupada could not, the Trikalagal could not see that Kirtananda was a practicing homosexual, that Bhavananda was a practicing homosexual, that some of these guys were, were stealing money? Uh, and some of these people were doing crooked stuff, and yet he made them into, well, he wanted to call them uh, 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 like the Catholic call, Church. No, it, no, he didn't want them like that. He, well, they turned themselves like that, but he wanted them to become officiating acharyas. And Tamal introduced the term Ritvik and said, well, is Ritvik the same thing? And Prabhupada said, yes. Yeah. That was in the same period of time. And so Tamal wrote it out as Ritvik rather than officiating Acharyas because he didn't want anyone to think <laughs> that what they were supposed to be doing as so-called officiating Acharyas was the same thing the temple presidents had been doing since 1970s. That they were, Prabhupada would chant on the beads, send them back, and the temple president would uh, would perform the fire sacrifice. One, one devotee, uh, Hansaduda, said he didn't like doing fire sacrifices. So instead of being the Ritvik, as it were, or the officiating acharya for the fire sacrifice, he had the temple commander do it. So that was reality. It doesn't matter who does it. What matters is that it be done properly by a person who's reasonably uh, pure, purified by not breaking the regulated principles. Does it make any sense at all? Hare Krishna, Yes. But anyhow, so getting back to your question, 
I'm afraid the truth has it's to okay. be okay. out. It's okay. Yeah. Got the truth <laughs> is out. It can't be taken away. This is not a question of the gopis and people trying to sexualize Radha Krishna and the gopis. No, that is that no, is done there. So it's, only, it's, it's not a direct so parallel. I know. Was, I never said Go that ahead. it's a direct parallel. I said it's a matter of privacy, right? Some things are private. They're supposed to be private for the family members who know what is going on here. I and, get your point. Uh, yes. So, uh, but like, you think that what, when Prabhupada asked his, all of his disciples to come for his last days, was that a desire for privacy? But it is his disciples. He's not asking everyone to, like, uh, to come it's just his disciples ultimately and that's what it should be even though they may be cheating him they may be stealing from him but ultimately five, just like five a thousand father of have, them, Prabhu. yes five thousand of them it would have been the the biggest samadhi ceremony the biggest <coughs> samadhi ceremony in pretty much in the history of Vrindavan or modern day Vrindavan. privacy would not be there everybody would have been filming it it was filmed anyhow. So where's the privacy? Uh, so if, if there were 5,000 people there, would have been less privacy. Uh, more publicity. Okay. More. I get but, your point. But but considering the Prabhupada comments... is not our family member. Prabhupada is the Acharya for the next 10,000 years. But if, like um, from privacy, what I mean is like... Uh, not the delineation between whether it was a public event or a private event. I'm saying like, if you look at the video itself, the video has like thousands and thousands, tens of thousands of comments. And some of them seem to be like pretty nasty comments. And they are all like coming from the same point, you know, that, that initial part of the video, which is like painful to look at. That's where they're coming from. Because if you look at any of other videos from Prabhupada, it's never like, it doesn't have this kind of reception. But when a video is like very graphic in that way, then it does have that perception. So, but, but, but you don't think that by taking that out, it would be whitewashing the crime? No, no, Prabhu, it's not about whitewashing. It's not that you have to change something. It's a matter of concealing versus revealing to everyone. Like it should still be available. As I said, like I, I in this is just my opinion, of course. I wonder what your no, opinion no, is. I, look, maybe let me, first of all, be clear, I honor you. I honor your view. I honor your feelings. And I think you're almost comparing it to like, if your grandfather died, do you want this sort of be broadcast everywhere? But Prabhupada wasn't our grandfather. Yes. Prabhupada was the Acharya for the 10,000 years. Whatever they treated him, if it's a secret, it's concealing a crime actually. Now, I don't appreciate the people. Who is saying negative things? Are these our devotees that are saying or the general public? No, they're not devotees. That's what my point is. They're not devotees. They're general public. And So what are they saying? Like uh, some some stuff in Arabic, which I don't understand. Probably if you understand. Those comments you... should, uh, comment should be deleted, but you can't. Uh... You can't do that. No, that's material life. People will do that. But yeah. You now, can't. The interesting thing about in Arabic, we've just been through a lot of things. They're getting offensive indirectly, right? War They're getting in Israel and Hamas. Uh, in, in, and, you know, Arabic is kill everybody except Arabs. <laughs> Basically. We can deliver Arabs, of course. We can deliver anyone, Christians, we can deliver Jews, we can deliver Buddhists, and we have. We have many Arabic disciples that were Muslim, and that's fine. But when you're dealing with Muslims, they want to kill everybody except Muslims. So that goes down, and that's just business as usual. Okay, we have Subramanian Prabhu online, so we haven't heard from him, so let's give him the floor. Prabhu, I want to thank you for coming. I, your intelligence is keen. Can you come back many times? <laughs> sure, probably whenever I have a chance. Well, yes, we'll, please. we'll add you to the WhatsApp group, Prabhu. There, you there give is, me a phone number. Is, 
you there's chance is doesn't exist free will exists so can you please engage as jiva as eternal part of the of krishna engage your free will to come back again because i appreciate your mentality i like the way your mind works i like your education your profession and we need you as part of the league for 10k as a builder of tomorrow not a lamenter of the past thank you bro i'm very honored by your words and uh, definitely like i will try to join please do how and often do you have don't let me turn you off i i, I manage to offend everybody but i don't mean to i'm trying to get everybody as spirit soul talking this is to go see where we engage with one another as spirit soul yes the meetings are held wednesdays and saturdays and sundays this is america okay so we, we start... need you so so naman uh, dwivedi make sure to give your phone number to ramachandra so he can uh, add you to the whatsapp group and then he'll send you a link every time uh, the group is starting sure so wednesday saturday sunday and around 8 p.m. pacific standard time yeah okay thank you mother ji i will please send, send me a message on uh, this uh, zoom so i'll sure. add your number prabhu okay yeah, should, uh, so manyam prabhu you have his, make sure you have his number whatever you need right so manyam prabhu go ahead prabhu we haven't seen you online uh, do you have any questions or right can i ask two questions? two questions it has been from our last one one hour i need to ask those two questions go ahead please. go ahead prabhu very sorry to interrupt you no problem go ahead, prabhu Hare Krishna. So no, when you say that Bhakti Vedanta, so do we? Sri Bhavanyan come up in a picture? Oh yeah, he's here. You you gotta scroll with the, swap it, swap your hands, swipe the screen. Hare Krishna, can you hear me? Screen. Hello. Hare Krishna. Hare Bo. Hare Bo. Swiping swiping the screen sounds dishonest. <laughs> I see right. you, Prabhu. Hare Bo. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Mohit Prabhu, you ask or I have no questions. Mohit Prabhu, Mohit Prabhu you're, you're your turn. We're waiting for you. Okay. We're here for. So we're here for. That. We're uncompromisingly here to recreate Iskon as Prabhupada showed us how to make it, not how we ended up evolving it into what we were comfortable with. as bodily conscious dudes okay let's give mohit prabhu the floor he wants to ask a question he's been waiting for so let's stop speaking yes, and yes. let him speak and let somebody else of us me answer so the go. first question which you told that bhakti siddhant swarasati thakur's uh, uh disciples i mean mistreated or misleaded as con devotees right so is no, it no, a... no, no. i never said that No, no, Pro. I'm not ask. I'm asking a question to. I'm not telling you, Pro. Yeah, please ask a question. Okay, yes. sorry, sorry. Please go. I'm on. very. I'm not ask. I'm not. So, Pro. Uh, Nara Nara and Pro. So, what do you think? It's the direct mistake of Sheila Bhakti Siddhant Thakur's uh, disciples. Those who are misleaded, escon, and become uh, bogus or fake gurus. That is the first question. The second question wow. is, when you talk about Prithviks, Pro. Yeah, what do you want me to give you a very far open answer? First question, just an very open, open answer. answer. Yes, open answer is, in my opinion, there was Thakur Bhakt Vinod, then Gorkha Shardas Babaji that gave Prabhupada planted the seed or the genetic power or whatever the spiritual genetics into Bhakti Sadanta to do things that were against the tradition of traditional Vaishnavism, like. going to the west and initiating non brahmins to become devotees and that what bhakti saranta's main task was at the time if you may know it at the time he was preaching after after takur bhakti node there were thousands and thousands of little groups forming of people that wanted to be gurus they were following rama krishna they were following this one that one <laughs> and as a result if prabhupada had gone to india 
to preach amongst thousands of these crazy guys, they would have eaten them alive because they wouldn't want the competition. So what Bhakti Savanta Saraswati did was like the Pied Piper. He lured them all into his embrace. And he spoke in such highly erudite, erudite language that they couldn't understand what the hell he was talking about. So they came there to try to understand. And the second motive, their strongest motive, was they wanted to say, if I could become his disciple and outlive him, wow, then I can become a guru and lots of people will come and surrender at my lotus feet if I wash them. And um, that's what he was doing. He was just collecting competition from Prabhupada and taking them out of everywhere. Now, you raised the question that Bhakti Siddhanta's disciples were interfering with Prabhupada. And I agree, yes, all of them were just Madhava Maharaj, uh, Sridhar Maharaj, all, all of the, um, uh, the you know, Navadvi, all, all of them, and all of the Bhaks, Puri Maharaj, they, they were all, one of the Puri Maharaj, they were all interfering with Prabhupada. And I would like to just lay my case on the table for you. So uh, just Subhama, Prabhu, I'll lay the table case on the table for you. How much worse would it have been if Bhakti Siddhanta had not initiated them? What if he hadn't swept them off the street and made them his disciples? Would they not have been attacking Prabhupada from every imaginable angle when he came? So Bhakti Siddhanta knew what he was doing. And he was defusing. He was like taking cobras and taking their fangs out. And a few left with some vestigial venom in their fangs. And they tried to attack Prabhupada, of course. So jealousy, this is what... So I wouldn't even call it jealousy. I mean, if one businessman tries to put the other man out of business, is that jealousy? Or is he just trying to dominate the, the field in which he is in? He wants to be the dominant businessman on the block, you know? So the second question, just a short question. No, no, but anyhow, you, but, but let's finish this one. Yeah. Do you, are you satisfied with my answer or do you want to challenge it? Or do you want to ask another question? Do, do I are challenged? you satisfied? Do you believe what I'm telling you? Yeah, yeah, bro. of course, of course, that's fine. Yeah. You know? So, because I've known a lot of the Prabhupada's godmothers, and I could see them uh, for what they were. Uh, okay, now, Haribo, next. The, the last question is, when you talk about Ritviks, right, specifically in this 10,000 years, when they have, when Prabhupada has told that there are 11 or 12 uh, Ritviks which can give dis uh, disciplic succession or which can make disciples, according to me, Hello. Yeah. So, Prabhu, according to me, those specific uh, rhetorics which are given, they can make disciples in front of Prabhupada's, uh, Prabhupada's Samadhi or Prabhupada's uh, uh, Murti, which is in the uh, temple, right? After they're yeah. dying, I don't think so. Any any of them can give Diksha. I'm, after them dying, any of the Eskon Guru can't give Diksha. You have to take Diksha. No, this this, this Ritvik thing was Prabhupada was being murdered and the people that were poisoning him were being chosen by Prabhupada to be Ritviks. Then not Ritviks, officiating Acharyas. Kamal Krishna added the word Ritvik, which he probably got from his mentor, Narayan Maharaj. Here. So, the, the, that whole Ritvik thing has been taken in such a way that it's made the so-called Ritviks powerless against mainstream ISKCON. We have to understand that Prabhupada was fighting to keep ISKCON from being broken up like the Godiamat into individual temples, individual so-called gurus in charge of each one. He, he wanted to keep the society together, so he created these officiating acharyas, which Chaval insisted on referring to as Ritviks so that he could fool the ISKCON membership with that term. And then he knew very well they were going to become regular gurus, as the GVC called themselves afterwards, as the so-called 
as the officiating charges called themselves afterwards, so Prabhupada sent them to Sridhar, who had already engineered the destruction of the Godi Amath by having Ananta Sesha established as the guru, who was a practicing homosexual and a crook. So, so Ananta Sesha became the guru of the Godi Amath, and it failed. So Prabhupada sent these guys to the same person that destroyed the Godi Amath to save this gun by telling these guys, oh, Prabhupada said you're regular gurus. Okay, this is what you do, and this is how you do it. Prabhupada knew that he would do it. He did it before, why wouldn't he do it now? And so we have these regular gurus, and they kept the movement together. The movement is going on very successfully. They have shamefully edited Prabhupada's books, changed them. They have shamefully don't chant Prabhupada's melodies when they chant, but they chant any damned howl that they can come up with. They play the Murdungas like a bunch of Africans beating tom-toms. They play cartels as though they're trying to drive away uh, mosquitoes. But the actual fact is, it's all there in Prabhupada's recording. It would take, if everybody sat down in one place and our group here were sitting with them and they said, okay, we're sick and tired of screwing up. What should we do? We'll say, well, let's start by chanting Prabhupada's melodies. Well, what's one of those? Oh, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Oh, that, is that a Prabhupada melody? Yes, it's one of Prabhupada's few melodies, yes. And how about Murdangas? Oh, Tau Tanakade Tinjate Tinjate Tinni Tinni Ta. It's a special thing to open the heart. And cartels. And what does that do? That opens the heart from the steel, cuts through the steel bands on the heart. And what does the Swami, so-called Swami step do? When you dance back and forth, the way Prabhupada showed us, and the way he did it by himself, the heart opens, it focus, if you know anything about yoga and about chakras, the heart chakra becomes isolated. So the Madanga strengthens the hara, or the abdomen, abdomen, abdominal chakra, and supports the heart chakra, the cartels cut through the bands on the heart chakra, and the swami step allows the now liberated heart to move in ecstasy by chanting. And I've seen devotees in 1969, when Prabhupada was chanting, suddenly it turned into a different world. And all the gopis, the, gopis, the brahmacharinis and householder women were dancing in their saris, swirling. It looked like a painting of gopis. And the brahmacharis were weeping and jumping up and down and dancing the Swami step. And Prabhupada was leading the kirtan. It was astonishing. But it never went up from there. It went down from there. And it went sideways from there into Bollywood kirtans and uh, Ramakrishna kirtans and, and make, them, make up your own kirtan kirtans. So, Prabhu, the final conclusion here is that only for this 10,000 years, Prabhupada can diksha, diksha. No one else can. All are exactly. Shiksha Gurus. All are Shiksha exactly. Gurus. They, have, they are only Shiksha Gurus. No one can become a Guru. No, 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 no. Do not degrade the word Shiksha. Shiksha Guru is not what they say it is. Prabhupada wrote, and you can look at it in the database. He said, the Shiksha Guru and Diksha Guru must be on the same platform. If they are not on the same platform, Uttama Adhikari, then one or both of them is a rascal. Then we should not talk about Shiksha Guru also. Never. no one on the Uttama Adhikari level, right? No. Prabhupada is the Diksha Guru. Iskand Guru is now one Prabhupada. Prabhupada to be the Shiksha Guru. But Prabhupada is not the Shiksha Guru. He's the He's the only guru. If anyone is making advancement in ISKCON, in spite of being initiated by Kanista Arakari initiators, if anyone in ISKCON is making advancement, it's not because of them, it's because of Prabhupada. Okay. It says straight in the nectar of instruction. What does it say, Ramachandra, that they are on the same 
they can initiate. Okay, yeah, the Karishta Madhyam can initiate, but they must be on the same level, meaning the disciple and the guru must be on the same level. And, so the they, and, and they won't be able to make any advancement further than their guru. So yeah. therefore, initiation must be accepted from Uta Madhakari. Yeah, that is what he said by their guru, meaning their initiator, yeah. Mr. Adhikari or even Madhya Madhikari, they can initiate, but he said, but the disciple is on the same level. So how will they make advancement if somebody on the same level as you, it's like the Boy Scout leader may be able to lead the Boy Scouts, but he's still a Boy Scout. He's not an avatar of some sort. Yes. So that's the problem in ISKCON, the Kanishta and lower than Kanishta so-called, sometimes, you know, they fall down and they initiate. Then what happens? A lot of, you know, times people leave. Some people have multiple gurus that fell down and it's very damaging to their spiritual life. A lot of people like, oh, guru left. Uh, if the guru fell down, then what hope is there for me? You know, and Narayan yes. Prabhu has experienced that with uh, multiple people taking multiple gurus in, Los Angeles, right? Now, Narayan Prabhu, you were describing that. Oh, absolutely. It turned into a whole slaughterhouse of gurus. The, the guru, one guru would be gone, they'd take initiation from another one, and he would be gone, take initiation from the next one. Three, four gurus. And what happened is everybody became sterilized. They became neutered like, like dogs when you, they can't breathe. You know, they take off their Yes. Go ahead. Can you breathe or out, sir? Spayed and spayed and neutered the devotees no. because they became to understand that the guru means nothing. I mean, yes. I mean, One that's more. the thing. Uh, I've been associating with the local devotees here for, I don't know, close to nine, ten years. And it seems like, you know, it's like when dealing with these devotees, I mean, it's very hard dealing with them. They all have different gurus. They have different philosophical understandings. And when we try to do a thing outside the box, it's like everything is coming to a halt. So, yeah. you know, this Kanishta Adhikari insufficient guidance. I mean, come on, well, what's going on here? Why cannot, if Krishna consciousness is such a wonderful thing and is very empowering, why, why aren't these disciples empowered? You know? Yeah. Yeah. And doesn't that also indicate that they don't even believe in their own gurus? Yes, exactly. Yeah, they don't even believe in their gurus. They're indirectly offensive. Is, is Rupa Manjari Prabhu still here? Yes, she is. Good. I want her to, she'll probably want to dance out into the wilderness, but uh, I'd like her to take part more right now because she knows all this stuff very well. Oh, yes. Rupa Manjari Prabhu, can you give some input? What's the question? Oh, we were discussing about the initiators being Kanishta Adhikari and how in ISKCON, when we talk to the disciples, of the initiators, the Kanishta Adhikari initiators, we have a very hard time in, you know, having... Yeah, because, because they're all divided up into their different camps. Plus, they're all reading different versions <laughs> of edited books by Prabhupada. So one book doesn't agree with another book. So that's confusing. And they end up just sticking to what their bogus guru tells them to do who to marry, what to do. And they just, and it's just like a gang, basically. Hmm. Yeah. Down, but I raised it. I raised the question. I'd like to know what you think about it, Rupa Manjari. I raised the question that they don't even believe in what their gurus are telling them. They believe as much as they want to stay in the um, initiated, but they don't believe that they're being given, like what Prabhupada gave us, a stream of transcendental channeled pure well, devotion coming from Krishna Loka. Their gurus tell them that Prabhupada is the actual deliverer, which is the truth. So isn't that is, is that not is that not correct? Yes. Well, what do they? Why do they have a middleman? Yeah. Because they, because they need a quote unquote living guru. That's why. Because of the <laughs> Catholic Church, they want you to take baptism from a living priest. But Jesus is the one that does all. Not because it. it's it's because the the way they get the money from the disciples is to when they they give it to the bogus guru, whereas if they only followed Prabhupada, 
they would give all their donations to Srila Prabhupada's Vani and his mission, which means that ISKCON would exponentially explode. And that's what Prabhupada wants. And that's yes. just precisely why that's precisely yeah. why they denied yeah. that yeah. request. Every home would be a temple. Good Everyone input. would be on the same page. You know, they would have Mr. Goshti's discussions, but this is not encouraged in the Guru. And society. how do we advance? This to go see means how do we go up? How do we advance? We have a temple here. How do we make 10 temples? We have a temple with 300 devotees. How do we make within Los Angeles 10 temples of 300 devotees? Right. How do we do that? That's it's to go see. That's GBC. True. I like the GBC. But you see, it's stagnant. Yes. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, there was an incident happened in Mayapur, right? Uh, Hare Krishna, when there was a guru following and under him, all got followed. He was following. He, under him, various devotees were following. And then ultimately, Prabhu couldn't handle it because a guru who is initiating, he also fall down. Can you just more elaborate? This happened in Mayapur. It's happening well, everywhere. Understand. Why only Mayapur? It's happening what, everywhere. What happened? First, I don't know first, understand what he's saying. What happened in Mayapur exactly? Who who was the guru who told him? True, I've just heard news that it, he was a very senior devotee who under him uh, various followers, uh, various disciples got uh, they fall down and then ultimately he also. This happened and this well, was covered in the initial years of after you know, he's talking about you know, Bhavananda. He's talking about Bhavananda when he was a guru and he was huh, caught please. having homosex and the GBC said you cannot be gurus and the next GBC meeting he became a guru again. So, please elaborate well, this guru, please. Just the last question. It was, it wasn't quite the next, but it was eventually. Is, is, because is, he, is, had, he, had, he had a couple of thousand disciples in Australia. Okay, okay. And they knew that if he was kicked out as a guru, that those thousand disciples would say the hell with it and take off. But there they had so many temples and they had so many disciples, they kept him for that reason. Can you imagine? Is Bhavananda a guru currently? Yeah, as far as I know. Really? No. I didn't know that. No, he's, he's not a guru, right? I didn't think he was a guru. Uh, no, no, he's, he's not. not. He He's never was, was a guru. Restored. He was in 1986. He was restored to being a guru. Did anything happen after that? I don't know. We'll have to ch check the GBC. Uh, uh, what you want to call it? Resolutions. They probably banned him or. But... No, he's he's not banned. I mean, he's roaming he, yeah, around. Yeah, he's not banned. He walks if you look free at the, in Mayapur. If you look at the Mayapur, what was supposed to be Iskand World Headquarters in Mayapur. Yeah. But they changed it into some garbledy book. It, they changed it. To, they changed it to GBC Society of West Bengal. Exactly. Well, that's the GBC, but I'm talking about the name of the <laughs> temple itself and the Mayapur community. But of the Mayapur temple, the replica of Saint Peter's Basilica from the Vatican, uh, they they had announced that Bhavananda is the chief design architect. Yes, I, I did hear that also. Yeah, and that's current, not for the past. For their t temple of the Vedic planetarium. So when then some devotee is falling under you, some disciple, how, I mean, it's very tough for the guru to control, right? If he's controlling... Who's talking, by the way? Through uh, Mohit disciple, Hare Krishna. Oh, I see. Oh, he, you're talking... <coughs> So when a disciple is falling under you to control that thing, what, what they have done in the material world is very tough. That is the test of this bogus Escon gurus. That is a test. People should see that and uh, replicate on that. Well, the thing is, you say bogus Escon gurus. First of all, why use the word guru when all they are is initiators? At, at most, they are ritviks. But at the same time, how do they become gurus? They're appointed by the GBC, the GBC, and from the GBC members also. So if the GBC is appointing the gurus, where does the GBC get elected? The GBC has to be elected. So 
we, it's pointless to even mention GBC as a reality until they are elected by the temple presidents. And until each temple is individually incorporated in whatever locality it is, independent, not one corporation. Yes. Hard to and, imagine, isn't it? So the yeah, guru was. I mean, that's why that's why these people are having this this propaganda is like the GBC right now, they're trying to answer so many questions, but they won't be able to answer all the well, questions. Well, we don't know what they're going to do. Maybe they're all going to tear their robes into shreds with their hands and fall on the ground and weep and beg for forgiveness. Who knows? <laughs> now, am I an optimist or what? <laughs> You're the greatest optimist. I'm very sorry to interrupt you in between. You joined after so many days. Rama, Rama Sumanayam Prabhu, Hare Krishna, please, please unmute yourself, please. Is Pachish still with us? No. Please no. say something, Ram Subramanya Prabhu. Please say uh, something. I was just saying about Ms. Bhavananda. He's, he's, what it says in the website is that... Uh, HKM uh, dot this guru supported and suspended is Bhavananda Das. So. Oh, Baba, is, Baba is suspended. Okay. Yeah, he's suspended. He so, yes. He, he is suspended? Yes, yes. As of when? When did they suspend him? Uh, it doesn't say, but this website says so, like guru supported and suspended. It has this. Approved and Bhavananda Das. He was suspended in 1986. Yeah, he's suspended, but he can still roam around because Ambarish is his good friend. So, you know, his friend. butt buddy. <laughs> hey, 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 let's, is a good let's friend. Not complicate good things. Point. <laughs> good point. No, I know good that, friend. Like, uh, if you call I have heard from some relationships about. good friends. Fords, the Fords. Hierarchy is a very good. He and Amzurish were lovers for, for decades. Politics, pure politics, right? This is what happens in material world. So, yeah, so hopefully they answer some of our questions. Yes. The GBC strategic planning. It would be interesting to know <laughs> why they suspended Bhavananda. So, Manyan Prabhu, did you see this? Uh, I want to show it to you. Uh, you got I work at what I do quotes and share purpose books in one period. That's what I what I do. I share with you devotees in that WhatsApp group. Yeah, you seen this? Uh, I don't want to put over GBC. <laughs> if you're using a cell phone, you can turn it sideways, you can read it better. Okay. I, I, want, I, I want I want to take the chance to thank each and every one of you for creating such a Krishna conscious inspira inspirational uh, conversation right now. Try. Yes. I it's always wanted it's, this it's, conversation for the last two, two hours. It's called It's the Ghosty. And it comes from each person speaking as spirit soul, right. not about <laughs> spirit soul. Amen, <laughs> Rupa. Amen, Rupa. <laughs> Amen, so Mark. What is this? Huh? So what ahead. does the strategic uh, planning committee do? Like, what do they strategize for? Who knows what they do, Prabhu? Who knows they should what they do? Distribute more books. You know, like, the, the <laughs> word amen, which is spoken by the Westerners, like that, amen, is actually Aramaic and it means amen. It's called amen. And amen means that is. Uh, no, no, Prabhu. It's, it's like the gecko. <laughs> Okay, Subhamanyam Prabhu, you were saying something. Please continue. Strategic, I felt like the people should strategize on like distribute more books and do Sankirtan. That's what they should strategize. All ever wanted to know about GBC but never had the courage to ask. Who who is answering all these questions? Like who knows who's gonna be answering? It's probably huh. some new guy from this, you know, from the swamp. I, I never think any any of the main the like the top twelve or the no, like the they won't be there. no none of them they don't have it like they didn't put up any names did they yeah they're they're very clever you know they probably have some neophyte and they got from the streets and you know they probably <laughs> punched him a couple of times and paid him some money and then 
<laughs> get him to say what I want him to say. Yeah, that's it. Probably a good speaker. Yeah. You know, they're probably a hold a gun behind his head like you are supposed they're, to. They're making the poster sort of like a Black Lives Matter sort of poster, you know, right. uh, the woke, woke, woke style, you know. Yeah, yeah, it's trying to be modern, like you said, Narn Ryan. Yeah. Oh. Save the dates. Save the dates. All you ever wanted to know about the GBC but never had the courage to ask. What does that mean? That everyone's scared of the GBC. <laughs> I thought people should be better watch out. You better watch out. That GBC is a scary, scary, scary. <laughs> Mafia. Mafia. <laughs> Mafia. <laughs> GBC Society of West Bengal is gonna kick your ass. Oh, if you ask man. too many, if you ask too many impertinent questions. I'm sure. Yeah. Oh, no, I don't think so. Don't they said by telling the poster, you can ask the questions you were afraid to ask. Exactly, like, but they're saying you are afraid to ask. Like yeah, because like, during, to ask. Like, but then after you ask, you may be afraid to ask the question, but after you ask the question, then you will be be afraid. <laughs> be very be afraid, afraid. Be very afraid. After you ask the question, like, like after Kamsa got to know that, uh, that, that they were the But after you ask the question, we'll make sure you have something really to be afraid of. So, <laughs> really? really? you were saying something, please go ahead. It was three like, people talking. Like, after Kamsa got to know that uh, that Supreme Personality of God has appeared and he starts sending all his minions, Putana, Shakata, Rishta. Rishta. <laughs> Yeah, you better be a little bit nervous when you approach those scary old GBCs. Scary old GBCs. <laughs> well, they are getting older. Yeah, they sure are. Mohit Prabhu. Yes, you have a question? Go ahead. Subhamanyam Prabhu. Mohit Prabhu is muted. He was oh. trying to speak something. No, I was just saying that uh, Rupa Manjari Prabhu, uh, Mataji is crossing her limits. Ma'am, please don't cross the limits. Cross Which one? We apologize. Cross, cross we apologize. Uh, yeah. <laughs> GBC cross limits. The GBC what, limits. Are you joking or are you serious? If you're serious, we will weep. No, 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 GBC <laughs> limit. Don't cross the GBC <laughs> limit. Who knows no, the GBC limit? GBC limit. You all would be murdered tomorrow, right? If you murdered cross tomorrow. <laughs> Oh, I cross limits all the time. <laughs> hey, but there's a mistake. Wait a second, Prabhu. There's a mistake built into that. Nobody yes. can murder us. Do you know why? Because we've been murdered already. No, I'm just kidding. No, because we're eternal. Because Krishna, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm eternal. Life Nobody is death. Me. Life eternal. is death. Life is death. We can Life. discuss on this, Prabhu, but uh, yeah, so called life is death. Also, yeah. Until Krishna is not sanctioning, no one can murder anyone in this material world, right? So, so what are your what Sri Supramanja Ji, what, what, I forgot which part of India you were in. Me? I'm... Death yeah. is life. Death is life. Life is death. Birth is death. Got you. Rupa. Yes. All right. Right. Okay, so are we coming to an end? I think we're uh, we're coming to an end. It's okay. ten... uh, but no, I was going to. I was asking Super Mandubhadra Prabhu wh where he lives. Where is he speaking from? Who? Me? Yes, Who? you. 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 Yes, you. Uh, I live in Bangalore. Bangalore. I'm in Westlake Village. Where? In in city, Bangalore city. I'm in Westlake Village. Not you. Not you. It's acting oh. Super Manyan Prabhu. He knows where you are. <laughs> Where, where is Subramanya Prabhu? Bangalore, Bangalore, India. Bangalore. Hare Krishna. Okay, I just I thought so. I just wanted to make sure. Try uh, Bangalore. You like the old-fashioned word? Uh, I thought it was now called Bangaluru. Uh, yeah, it is like it was a uh, earlier called Benda Karluru, means like bald beans, and then from there you got Bangaluru. Uh, so you don't agree that Bangaluru is the proper name? It was actually it is called Bangalore too, but we call it Bengaluru. <laughs> because should have been. Uh, even I am not sure why, but yeah. 
I was there in 2016. I didn't see you. <laughs> I I am very recent. Like I was like 2018ish. I was like introduced to this. Yes. Yeah, it was so, very interesting experience being there. I also went to um, Udipi. 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 I've Udipi. been to Udipi. Yes. Yeah. Okay. For the Vishwakarma temple. So I think we're coming to an end. Subramanian Prabhu, anyone have any questions? Last minute, last five, ten minutes? Uh, no, Prabhu. No? Okay. Subramanian we... No questions. No, no, no questions. Mohit Prabhu? No, Prabhu. I have more questions, but this would last in three hours. So what? I don't want to. Oh, oh, why not just throw them out? Throw of the course. questions out. Next Some questions class, out class. so that Good we can think about the answers. <laughs> He has to go. No, we don't have to go. We have five more minutes. So five minutes. Oh, nice. Yes, five minutes. I'm counting down. Next, Hadi next. Hadi Hadi Hadi. That is a fantastic picture of Srila Prabhupada. Hi. Thank you. Hadi Paul. All right, Prabhu. He is tomorrow. He's my guru. He's my guru. <laughs> oh, Prabhupada, my, my, my Salvador. Yes. You know Salvador. Yes. Salvador. Prabhupada is my Salvador. Fantastic. Yes. Fantastic. Yeah. Savior. Savior. Yeah. yeah. Amen. Hi, 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 hi. Hari Hari. Yeah, right, that's a magnificent hi, hi, hi. picture. All right. I'll end it here. Thank you very much for wait, participating. Wait, wait. You said we had five minutes. We got two more minutes left. You yes, going to ask a question. Let's no have the question. Ask a question. The question is stopping right now tonight. No, Super Monday wants to answer questions. I got a question. I got a question. Okay, go ahead. Please, I got please. some. Uh, I got a stack of beautiful saris made out of silk that are really traditionally done. Um, should Nathan photograph me with Tilak wearing these saris, and I should use those photos in this session? Absolutely. You think it's a good idea? Fantastic. Okay, I'll do it. I'll do it. Do it. All right, Hare Krishna. Hare That's two minutes Thank already.